الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praises be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى May peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear brothers and sisters Today's talk is about an issue that is often used as an example of Islam being pro-men and disgracing to women. This is the issue of polygamy. Is polygamy biased to men and is it disgracing women? We will examine this today. Naturally, brothers and sisters, every girl has two dreams, being a wife and being a mother. She looks for marriage to fulfill these two needs. Obviously, she loves to be the first wife and the only wife of a man. But what if she did not have the chance? And we have many cases around us where we see this is happening. Either because of age, because of appearance, because of certain circumstances, whatever. What if a woman could not find or could not be the first wife of a man. What options she have? What options she has? Now, shall we ignore her basic needs? Shall we just relax back and say, well, this is her bad luck? Isn't that harsh? Does that sound Islamic? Does that even sound, sound humanitarian? So what solutions we have to such ladies? Other than letting them missing around, corrupting themselves and the society they live in. Here is the Islamic solution. A lady have the option. A lady has the option to be a second wife. In Islam, men are allowed to marry two, three, up to four wives. They have to go in a full marriage contract with all the commitments and responsibilities of marriage. He can go for this provided he can care for them all and be fair to all of them. Now here is the point that many people miss and causes the confu confusion about polygamy. In Islam, any marriage contract, be it the first, second, third or fourth, must be approved by both parties. So whenever a marriage takes place, there is a man and a woman who opted for it and approved it. So, women go for their second marriage out of their own will. And in Islam, if a woman is pushed for a marriage, this is a great sin. And in fact, if she asks to be divorced, she has the right to do so. So, this is the Islamic solution to this problem. Now, here is the argument that some people raise. What about the first wife? 
she will definitely be upset. That's true. And that's very much expected. In fact, it's surprising, it would be surprising if the first wife did not get upset. But let's look at the picture in full. We have two ladies here. One has her basic needs fulfilled and she will be upset for the second marriage while the other is looking for her basic needs. Why do we show so much sympathy to the first wife and we don't care about the needs of the other wife? Yes, the first wife will be upset and Islam acknowledges the inconvenience of this first wife but this is a price justified and quite acceptable to solve the problem and the real need for her sister. A second argument that is often raised as well is that well men when they go for a second marriage they go after their desires. Yes that's true. What is wrong with that? Men desires are internal incentives that Allah put in them to go for marriage. Otherwise, what would motivate a man to go for commitments and responsibilities of a second house if he does not has if he does not have anything in it for him? So naturally he will be looking for his desires when he goes for a second marriage. And what is often said as well is, well, if what you're saying is true, then men should go and marry old ladies, ladies with problems, and so on. But some of them go and marry beautiful young ladies. Well, brothers and sisters, leave the options to the ladies. If a young, beautiful lady wishes to be the second wife of a man for any reason, it's her choice. Why do you want to limit their choices? So, as you can see, brothers and sisters, polygamy is not pro-men. Polygamy is not disgracing to women. How could it be disgracing to women when it is an option given to them? They can accept it or they can simply not accept it. So, the conclude brothers and sisters, polygamy is a social system that solves the problems of the society and probably it is there in the first place to solve and address women needs. Saying all of these arg arguments, we should not forget that we are Muslims and we should be submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we find a ruling does not suit us, we should still submit to Allah and as Allah said in Quran that when Allah decides on something, then a true believer, man or woman, would have no choice for that. And Allah knows best وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم